Hey guys, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and I am here with my fifth anti-haul video, aka what I'm not gonna buy. What I'm not gonna buy! <laughs> Woo! I'm very excited that I have made five of these. I feel like we're on a roll. We're gonna do it together. We're gonna stop shopping. It's gonna be great. We can do it. Now, always at the top of these videos, I refer you to my first what I'm not going to buy anti-haul video in case you've never watched one of these and don't know what this is. Today I'm going to one-up you and I'm going to explain it a little bit because I've gotten into some shit. I've gotten into some discussments, which is a word that my friend Lizzie made up. A discussion and an argument combined. A discussment. I've gotten into some discussments with you guys about the ethics of purchasing things and whatnot. Anyway, so let me give you my disclaimers again and explain myself a little bit. Number one, this is me. This is my opinion. It is, I'm talking about myself. I'm only talking about reasons why I am not going to buy these specific products. Now, does that mean that you shouldn't buy them or you're an idiot if you buy them? Hell no, you might love these products. And guess what? I might love these products someday too. This is just right now, I'm saying I'm not gonna buy them. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Number two, this video utilizes hyperbole, which is a form of exaggeration. A lot of other YouTubers exaggerate by telling you how much you need to invest your money in specific makeup items for whatever reason. You need this. You need this in your life. Stop this video right now and go out and buy this. Do it. Do it. That's hyperbole. That's exaggeration. Is that true? Do you need it? No. Do you need it like you need air? No, you don't. When I'm telling you you don't need it, you shouldn't buy this, don't buy this, I'm also hyperbolizing. I'm being hyperbolic in order to help you curb this kind of overwhelming urge that has been driven by marketing and consumerism and our culture of purchasing things we don't need in America. I'm just using hyperbole in a positive way to help you realize that you don't actually need any of these things. The third disclaimer that I have to give is a thank you. I use so many other people's research and experience and swatch videos and haul videos and collection overviews and stuff to come up with my opinions about these products. I am not just talking out of my ass. I don't look at one picture. I don't read one press description from the company about a product. I really do my research in depth to come up with my opinions about these products. And I just want to make that crystal clear to you. Okay, great. Those are the disclaimers. So let us jump into this anti Hall. So in the theme of making my anti-haul videos specific about certain types of products, I decided to make this video about eyeshadow palettes. And not just any eyeshadow palettes. Eyeshadow palettes that are either sold out, not yet available, or waiting to be restocked. Now you might be like, okay, why are we going to talk about products that I can't even get right now? Like I don't even have to worry about getting them because they're not available. Here's why. They're gonna be available. I really feel like the reason these are out of stock is not because, oh, we just didn't make enough of them. This is all strategic. They made the perfect amount of products that would sell out in a perfect amount of time so they could then hype up more, like, oh, it's coming back in stock. Don't worry, you gotta buy it. Don't be fooled. This is all part of the hype, and I'm going to help debunk some of this hype right now. Let's go. First one. I had to start here. I mentioned this product in my second anti, third, one, the other anti haul video where I was like, talked about the Too Faced Chocolate Bon Bon palettes. And I was like, oh my God, you've already seen these colors. No need for this. Same old boring eyeshadows with cute packaging and a gimmick. Smells like chocolate. I could insert that segment right here and just replace the words chocolate bon bon with stinky peach or whatever the fuck it's called. The Sweet Peach palette by Too Faced. Boring shades. There's not a lot of peach shades in 
here as if that was something that you couldn't get already like that's the gimmick like oh my god an eyeshadow palette full of peach shades not -uh. it's got a bunch of brown boring shades that you already own in multiple eyeshadow palettes or pans or whatever a couple of peachy peach shades that kind of suck formula wise these are not gonna get you like a crazy insane pigmented look you gotta work to build them up will you get like a beautiful crazy never before seen peach look hell no like this is just a gimmick it's just re-promotion of other shades there are plenty of videos that show you the dupes between other chocolate bar palettes from Too Faced and this palette and how there's really only a couple unique shades and for $49 like ugh, no 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 not a re-promote in like ugly packaging that smells like peaches again on your eye Ew! Not to mention, when you look at people's looks that have come out of this video, you're like, okay, I should have palette with like 16 pans or whatever, or 18 or 12, or a ton of pans, lots of different colors. Oh my god, you're gonna be able to get so many different looks out of this, right? Wrong. You look at people's looks and it's like, well, that's the same old kind of like warm, neutral eyes, the other one, and you, no matter if you blend it out with the canned peaches shade or the rotting peach shade or whatever, you know, what it doesn't matter what you did, it's all gonna look the same anyway because these shadows are not super pigmented. So once you blend them, they all kind of blend together and look the same anyway. I feel like you could get like three eyeshadows and do any look from this palette that I've seen. Not gonna buy it, don't wanna talk about it anymore. Hashtag Stinky Peach. Next up is the Manny MUA Makeup Geek Palette. Again, like the Stinky Peach, this is also sold out currently. But Makeup Geek site says it's going to be put back in stock, don't worry. You get nine shadows for $45. Some of them are exclusive to this palette. One of them is a pressed version of a loose pigment, which actually looks really beautiful. It's kind of a blue-brown kind of duochrome pigment. I think it's called Insomnia. The shades in this palette really do look beautiful. Like there is, and I, I, I don't have any Makeup Geek shadows, so I was like, maybe I would get this palette to kind of see what the formula's like, if it's good or not. And then I was looking at them more and I was like, all right, well that red Red's really kind of interesting, and the Insomni thing's kind of interesting. There's like one interesting look that I could get out of it. And I'm like looking at the other ones and I'm like, all right, well, that's like a pretty golden highlighty shade. All right, I have that. Oh, but oh, I can blend out a cut crease with this match. Okay, I already have that. You can get like a very limited number of looks, but they're very specific. Like they're Manny's looks. They're like his shades that he likes, his go-to shades, which I appreciate. If you want to look like him, and his like reddish nude neutral eye thing then maybe this is the palette for you if you want to get a lot of versatility out of a lot of different looks i don't think this is the palette for you i would love a makeup geek palette that has like nine foiled eyeshadows that are all very different because then you could use it as like a little center of the lid highlight palette and get so many different looks out of it this palette's going to give you one type you're gonna have a couple different pops of color shades potentially in your looks but you're going to get the same kind of reddish blended out neutral eye look no matter what shades you use in this it's just true it's just not super versatile and if you're someone like me who already has plenty of eyeshadow palettes plenty of different types of like tones of matte shadows and different pops of color you really don't need something like this except for like the one or two shades and you can get a lot of those individually at Makeup Geek. So I'm sorry Manny, congratulations on your palette. I think it's really beautiful, but I think it's like a very niche thing. I don't think it's a must have. Look up the looks from this palette on YouTube and you'll see how, again, how similar they are. And if that's a look that really appeals to you and you don't already own something that can you can achieve that with, then by all means go ahead and purchase this. But Honestly, you probably can do this with other stuff you already have, and the couple pops of like interesting things, like that red shade Mars or Insomnia, I don't think you need to invest in this whole palette to get those. Sorry, not gonna buy it. Okay, next is the not yet available Violet Voss Holy Grail palette. By the time I post this video, you will be able to order it. So I don't know if this is still not currently available. When it does become available, it's probably going to sell out really quickly anyway, so it can probably still be included in this video. I swatched this palette live at iMats. You can check out my iMats vlog video to see that. And I was impressed. I thought the pigmentation was great. It wasn't crazy expensive. It's a $52 palette, but you get a lot of product in it. And the, the pigmentation and the kind of quality of the shadows 
just seemed great. Looked really beautiful. Here's the thing that I'm, I'm, here's my thing with this. It's like, it's kind of like the Manny, it's like a bigger version of the Manny MUA one without the Insomnia shade. Got some reds, got some cranberries, and a lot of gold. Like a lot, like a lot of gold. Ugh, like are you gonna use all of those gold shades? No, you're gonna use like one or two. You're gonna use that super sparkly one that I like immediately swatched first because it's like super sparkly and great. Once you do that one, you're not gonna go to its like duller kind of boring sister next to it and be like, you know, like I'm going for a gold eye, but I want like a half ass gold eye. No, like why are those shades in the same palette? Like, I don't understand. This palette could have been five shades. It could have been six shades and it could have been so much more bang for your buck. I feel like this was just like, well, we need a big old neutral, warm, shimmery palette that people can use because everybody else got one, so we need to make one. Yeah, everybody else got one, including all of us. Like, we all have them. We have them. We don't need another one. Sorry, I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. Okay, next up, this is another sold out product. The Dose of Colors Hidden Treasure Palette. This palette is 50 bucks. You get 10 little pans of eyeshadow that are horrifyingly randomly spread out. Did the cost of this palette go up because they had to like die cut this like really idiotic shape? Yeah, totally. Like, you better believe it. When you see something that's, like, very, like, symmetrical and square, and you're like, oh, that's kind of boring. It is, but it's also cheaper to make. When things are more regular looking, they're cheaper to make packaging-wise. When you have something that is, like, absolutely crazy looking like this, you better believe that that was way more expensive in order to, like, create the new, like, casting for it, the new, like, dye to, like, cut it. Like, the reason this palette is 50 bucks for 10 eyeshadows is that. It's the packaging. If the packaging were good and like useful and unique, maybe be interested in it. This packaging is frustrating. There's no, it's just like, ooh, like you wandered into a cave and found a bunch of precious gems. Yeah, that's fun for like fantasy role play or like choose your own adventure. But like when I'm freaking doing my makeup, I don't want to like sift through my collection of gems that I've panned out from the silt. No, I want to know where the freaking colors are and have them organized in an understandable way. You know my pet peeve about palettes being like totally confusing and like not organized in a helpful, useful way? This takes the cake. If you lined up all these colors and put them like in order, you'd be like, great, another boring neutral palette that has a matte black. Good for you for including the matte black. But other than that, it's a boring neutral palette with a bunch of gold shit in it. Even if I were looking for that, I could not buy this because it is so disorganized. I feel like they made this to piss me off. Like they did. Like they were, they watched like my first anti-haul video and they were like, you know what? We're going to piss off this fucking drop. We're going to, she thinks the vice palette's disorganized. Wait till they see this one. Like, I just, I can't even look at it. Like it just, it just, ang it angers me. It incenses me. It incites rage. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know. Especially because all of their like lipstick packaging is like so simple and sleek and stuff. I don't know why they, they were like, whoa, 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 crazy eyeshadow. Like, no, no, don't need it. Not going to buy it. Nope. Sorry, dose. All right. Next up, if I'm going to talk about eyeshadow palettes that sell out or are sold out or like crazy hyped up that you do not need, this is the Grand Star Supreme Blue Ribbon Lil Miss winner. The Morphe 35O. $22.99, very affordable, 35 shadows, bang for your buck, it's there. Why don't you need this palette? Because 35 orange shadows is bullshit. You do not need that many of the same freaking color. Just like the Violet Voss thing, just like all the other ones I'm talking about, if Morphe made like a 12O or a 6O, oh my god, I would totally endorse that, amazing. Are these colors very flattering on a lot of different skin tones? Yes. Are they very on trend right now? Yes. Can you get probably all the shades from the, pe the Stinky Peach palette with this palette? Yeah, you probably can. But do you really need that many? And yes, I know the price is like affordable. Like it's, you're not going to be wasting a ton of money on this, but like that does not 
matter. You're going to have a giant ambiguous palette that's going to live in the back of your makeup drawer that, like you can't see. You don't remember what it is. If you've got any other Morphe palettes, you're screwed because they all look exactly the same from the outside. You're going to have to rifle through it, find the 35O, then you're going to get it. And then when you open it up, you're going to be like, oh, I just want to do like a simple neutral orange. I just want a simple like orangey, beautiful. I just want simple, 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 just really quick, simple, simple. Open it up. You got 35 of these motherfuckers staring at you being like, use me, use me, use me. If you have a problem making decisions, this is not the palette for you. When you use any of these shadows, it's just like the Stinky Peach palette. You're going to come out with the same exact look. Do you need 35 different shadows in like the cheapest packaging ever to help you achieve that look? Nope. No, you don't. And the hype sphere of this is just like, it's over, it's, mo it's the most I've ever seen. It's the most. Not for nothing, when you see people talking about this product and hyping it up so much, and then you see that they have an affiliate code down below, that means that they will benefit from you buying it. I know when people are like, I'm going to be honest, I have an affiliate code. And you're like, oh, they're so honest. Of course they're honest. But like, that doesn't mean they're still not potentially talking about this product because even if they're subconsciously doing it, they're making money off of you purchasing it if you click on their affiliate link. So of course they're not going to talk shit about it because they want you to buy it because they want to make money because we're human and American. I do not have an affiliate code with Morphe. I've already talked shit about some Morphe stuff in the past, and I've talked love about some Morphe stuff in the past. But this palette, Morphe 35O, ah uh ah, -uh, it is on my shit list. I'm never gonna buy it. Not gonna buy it. Not gonna buy it. Okay, finally, one more not yet available palette. This is the upcoming Urban Decay Alice Through the Looking Glass collaboration with Disney. These shades just don't speak to me. They're like as disorganized as a Vice palette, and I bet there's gonna be a bunch of chunky glitter shades in it that are just gonna be completely unusable, because every Urban Decay palette has at least one of those shades in it. You know what I'm talking about, Vice 4. The packaging, I'm already like, ugh, like a little too, it's not gonna be elegant and simple. It's gonna have freaking Johnny Depp on it. I don't know if I'm interested in that. It's like the Disney ad for the movie on my eyeshadow palette. I don't need to see that every day. Which brings me to like the real reason why I'm not gonna buy this. I know a lot of people like love Disney and are like die hard Disney fans. It's like something that like helps you connect to your childhood, to like happier times. Maybe you went to Disney World, you went to the happiest place on earth. So connecting to Disney stuff really like makes you happy in like a deep, simple, associative way. Which I support, I don't wanna take that away from you. Disney is also, a massive corporation. It owns a lot of intellectual property, which means like brands and ideas, stories, uh, characters. So uh, of course they own like Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. Now they own Alice in Wonderland too, which is based on a book that Walt Disney did not write. And honestly, like Urban Decay's collaboration with Gwen Stefani or something didn't bug me. Like I wasn't like, God damn that Ayn Rand loving money pig Gwen Stefani just trying to exploit a makeup company. Like, no, like Gwen Stefani's Gwen Stefani. Like she's, say what you will about her, but she's a person, you know, like she's had her ups and downs. She had her career. She's a self-made woman, you know, whatever. No doubt she is. Disney is not Gwen Stefani. Even though our government views corporations as people, I do not. When a makeup company collaborates with a Com like a corporation that owns intellectual property like Disney. Ugh, it skeeves me out. And there have been a ton of Disney collaborations recently. There was like the Disney Villains collection, which like just came out randomly at drugstores with no brand really attached to it. There was the kind of Sephora like giant Minnie Mouse clutch thing that came out. And now there's this. So like Disney has their fingers in a lot of different companies and a lot of mediums. Remember when there used to be like dolls and action figures for movies? And remember how every Everyone just kind of knew that they were just like plastic shit and like swag. Just more marketing stuff, like buy a figurine of Buzz Lightyear and you know, well Disney will make more money, like that's, we make more money with the merch sales than the movies, which is true. Now they're just being smarter about it and they're like, not only can we have Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter looking insane figurines, we could also plaster their faces onto some random eyeshadow colors and sell it to makeup junkies. That is exactly what is happening here. The blatant hype marketing BS of this is infuriating. It is transparent. It is clear that this is not like an in-depth, in-touch collaboration that like deeply investigates like what Alice would have worn on her eyes in a historically accurate way. No, this is just marketing. It is just a gimmick. Ugh, don't buy this. It's just 
swag. It's like buying the freaking like plastic cup that like you have that has like Star Wars on it at the movie theater. It's like collector's item. It is not a collector's item. It's more crap to make them money. That's what it is. They're telling you that it's something that you need and collect and whatever just so they can make more money. Ugh, don't fall for it people don't i love disney world I, I had a great time there as a kid it was fabulous i love disney movies too like a little mermaid oh my god i wear an ariel wig like i'm in, i'm obviously influenced by some disney shit but now that i'm like an adult and like aware of like capitalism and consumerism i can't not see that side of disney as well it's like a machine it's a massive corporation and they're just trying to get money any chance they can get they're trying to make money that's how they've survived you know that's how they can, how they do it just don't don't support it don't buy into it just make them realize that like they actually have to do more than just slap the name of a movie onto an eyeshadow palette or some other product to make it like a valid experience for you no they got to do more than that step it up maybe disney you want to be revolutionary you want to market to women why not have a princess that doesn't look exactly the same as every other disney princess maybe like have women not exclusively being rescued in your films like you want to like support women do that instead of like collaborating with a makeup company and trying to make some money off of people that love johnny depp that is my anti-haul video number five Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my other anti-haul videos if you haven't. Don't worry, I don't only anti-haul on this channel. I posted a couple haul videos recently. Please check them out. Check out my demos. I do all kinds of stuff. I'm like a, I'm a busy girl. Busy, 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 busy. Doing lots of videos. Doing lots of other life stuff things. Just check it out. Check out all my stuff. Stop. The next videos that I'm going to be working on, that I'm going to be filming, are going to be like my kind of gender talk chatty videos so if you watch my Q&A video and you requested that I talk more about gender and stuff do not worry I've not forgotten about it it is coming just been very busy and there's been a lot of makeup shit that I had to talk about because a lot's been going down subscribe to my channel if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up if you like it and you want to see more of these videos comment down below let me know if you agree with me if you disagree with me if you want me to talk about other shit if there's other types of products you want me to talk about if there's things that i mentioned in this video where you're like yes oh my god or you're like uh-uh girl no conversation is key it's a dialogue we're all in this together and we can do it yes we can i'm kimberly clark bye